Hi everyone, uh, this is Ben from Common Seas, and it's so great to be here to celebrate World Ocean Day for schools. When I say here, I should actually confess this is a pre-recorded video, but I'm actually going to give you some ways you can get in touch with me at the end of this presentation. So if you've got any questions, if you want to get in touch to say hello, then we'd love to hear from you. What I want to do is tell you a little bit about our oceans, and I want to talk about how healthy oceans are vital not just for healthy sea creatures, but for healthy you and me. I work with an amazing organisation called Common Seas. Uh, we're on a mission to keep the oceans healthy by stopping plastic getting into the sea. We're a not-for-profit, and that means that any money we make goes straight back in the pot to support our mission. I'm recording this from my home in Bristol, um, but we work all around the world. We work with um, teams on the ground in Mediterranean, on a Greek island called Paros, and also in tropical islands like the Maldives and Indonesia. I'm here to ask you with a big question really. I'm here for your help in stopping plastic going into the sea and it's not an easy task. So let's start by waking up our minds and our bodies with a quiz. Now a quiz is tricky because we're not together but you can still play along at home and so I think what we can do is I'm going to read out a question and I'm going to give you 20 seconds to think about your answer and I warn you I'm very strict if you're with your family, you could discuss it. If not, you could write it down on a bit of paper or you can just play along for fun. So, my first question, are you ready for the quiz? Well, here it comes, ready or not. First question is, the sea gives us oxygen. True or false? So, the timer has started. I'm going to give you a few more seconds, but I did say I was going to be strict. It's true. That's right. The sea is an absolutely vital source of oxygen. Some of you might have already learned that plants make oxygen because they turn sunlight into food through photosynthesis. But did you know that three quarters of the world's plant species live in the sea? It's kind of remarkable, huh? It's things like phytoplankton, kelp and seaweeds. And this is just one of the many reasons we're going to talk about why we need to keep our ocean healthy. Okay, next question. Three billion people depend on the ocean worldwide. True or false? Okay, I'm starting my clock again. 20 seconds. What do you think? Three billion people? It's a lot of people, huh? Well, it's actually true. Lots of people around the world work in and around the ocean or their livelihoods depend on it. In fact, 90% of the products that we have, the things that are transported, the things that are in your house, they've come to us by sea. About half of tourists travel to holiday on their holidays by boat. We use the seas for things like energy, renewable energy. You may have seen some of the, the ocean wind turbines. And of course, there's the fishing industry, which provides about 260 million jobs. And let's not forget the sailors, the scientists, the explorers, the deep sea divers, the marine biologists. So the bottom line is we are all pretty deeply connected to the ocean. Okay. Let's start thinking about plastic. Here's another question for you. A quarter of the plastic waste that we make is single use, true or false? So remember when we're thinking about single use, we're thinking about plastics that are just used once and often for not a very long time. So it's things like plastic drinks bottles, plastic bags, straws. So what do you reckon, true or false? Get my clock out again. Clock's ticking, 20 seconds. Five more seconds to go.
It's false. Did I catch you out this time? So actually, it's not a quarter, it's a half of the plastic waste that we make is single use. So this means that we're making this material, we're making products out of this material rather, and it's designed to last hundreds of years, but we're using it once and then it becomes waste. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, when you start thinking about it like that? And the problem is, we use so much of it, the plastic is everywhere, literally everywhere. There are in fact trillions of bits of plastic in the ocean right now. The, uh, the red arrows on this picture show you how plastic moves around the ocean. And then the dark patches, the sort of yellow and orange patches, the darker it is, the more plastic that's been found in that part of the ocean. So as a result of all this plastic getting into the sea, we've actually found plastic in the deepest part of the sea trenches of our ocean. That's like seven miles underwater, which is pretty astonishing. We found it in the Arctic, so these hugely remote environments. Also, troublingly, we're also finding plastic in our food, in our water. It's even tiny, tiny pieces in the air. And because of that, disgusting fact number one, we've also found plastic in our poo. So hopefully we can agree that it's a pretty important problem for us to solve. But at the moment, we're probably not doing a great job, if I'm honest, at solving it. Plastic production is going up. We are using more and more of it. And of course, it's a really, really useful material. So that's why. And it's an interesting story here, because did you know that actually, at its origins, plastic was trying to be environmentally friendly? It was invented in the late 19th century, when things were made out of ivory tusks or tortoise shells, which we used to comb our hair and and coral was used to make jewellery. And we needed to find an alternative material, otherwise we were gonna run out of elephants, turtles, and coral reefs. So when we invented plastic, it took the world by storm. You know, it's cheap and it's colorful and it's easy to make. And we didn't have to hunt or hurt wild animals to use it. But you know that saying, too much of a good thing. Well, today we are producing 350 million tons of plastic a year. So by the time you're 40, there could be more than four times more the amount of plastic on the planet as there is today. So it's pretty astonishing. And plastic in the sea is just bad, bad news. So not only does plastic in the sea stop some of those useful ocean jobs that we talked about in the earlier slides, giving us food, oxygen and jobs, but it also harms the millions and millions of seabirds, sea mammals, and countless fish species that we find in the ocean. And there are lots of different ways in which it does this. We're gonna have a little look. So this picture that you can see is actually pictures of plastic that were found in the, the tummy of a sea turtle in the Pacific Ocean. And it's interesting because you can actually start to see the pits of plastic that you might recognize in your everyday life. You can see bottle tops, you can see bits of balloon, you can see bits of fishing net in there. I think I can see a toothpaste top in there. So it's a pretty shocking image. And what's happening is that these beautiful creatures, they mistake the plastic for food. Once it's in their tummy, they can't digest it. and They have no room for that nutritious diet that they need, so it can cause real harm. And at the moment, the research says that 52% of the world's turtles have eaten plastic waste. And it's not just turtles. The same is true for whales. Even though they're so big, there's enough plastic in them that it can make them sick and it can make them starve. It can even make them die. So we've clearly got a few problems we've got to solve and a really important reason to act. Finally, let's look at these beautiful sea lions. Super curious, playful, you can kind of see from the picture, can't you? But the problem is that when they start playing with plastic waste, they can get tangled up in it. And that can stop them from swimming well. And if they can't swim, they can't catch their food and they can't escape from predators. So hopefully you're getting an idea of some of the problems. But I don't want to get you guys feeling down about this because there's lots that we can do to help. There's lots that you can do to help. And I know, you know, around the world, young people are increasingly saying to grown-ups in businesses and governments, hey, you need to sort this mess out. But I guess I'm here to say that you can start and you can help as well. 
And that's why we've developed Homeschool with Common Seas. And it's going to be a really cool way for you to start learning about this issue and thinking about some of the steps that you can make in your own life. So for World Ocean Day, we're really excited to be launching 16 simple, free activities that are available online. From making your own slime to learn about how plastic is made, to challenging your household to reduce its plastic waste, from quizzes to creative tasks. It's going to help you explore the issues and some of these really big questions that you might have about plastic, like why do we use so much of it? How does it get into the ocean? And what can I do to help? And the good news is that you're not alone. You're now joining a movement of sea champions all over the world who are committed to taking action. And that's a really exciting thing to be part of. Let me introduce you to a few of them. So this is Amy and Ella, Amy and Ella Meek, and they're 16 and 14 years old. And together they've picked up over 60,000 pieces of plastic and they've safely disposed of it, stopping it from getting into the ocean. They even invented an app on their phone to keep track of the running total of bits of plastic. And they've set up a company called Kids Against Plastic, which rewards organizations, schools, and businesses who stopped using the most commonly littered plastic items that we find in the ocean. Things like coffee cups, bottles, straws, and single-use plastic bags. So go and check it out. I want to tell you a little bit about two brothers, Gary and Sam, who founded Make a Change 10 years ago to help clean up the beaches of their home island of Bali and around the world. They've done loads to raise awareness about plastic, um, both in their country and all over. And in 2017, they set up to kayak down the world's most polluted river, located in Indonesia. And they used that as a way of raising awareness about the toxic chemicals in the waters and the masses of plastic that you can see in this image floating on the surface. And Common Seas, we're working with sea champions too. In fact, we're working in Indonesia, and you can see an image from one of our projects. And it is a beautiful place, but it's really struggling with plastic pollution in its rivers and its ocean. And we're working in an area, a part of the country called Eastern Java, and a river called the Brantas, which of course flows into the ocean. And one of the main plastic items that we find in the river Brantas is single-use nappies. You're not going to believe this, but we think that about 1.5 million used nappies enter the Brantas River every day, and it's growing. So one of the things that we're doing is helping local families use reusable nappies instead of disposable ones. You can see one of our models here with our, one of the designs. And by making these kinds of nappies affordable, easy to access, and helping people to understand by throwing the rivers is causing lots of problems, we're not only helping keep the river clean and stop plastic waste there, we're also stopping it getting into the ocean. I guess the start is, at the start of this presentation made plastic pollution feel like a big and scary problem to solve. And I guess it is, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be easy, it needs everyone. But the good thing is that once you start looking, you'll see that there are sea champions all around you. It may not look like it, but I think the owners of shops like this are sea champions. Usually when you go to a shop like a supermarket, loads of food comes in, plastic wrappers, cling film, and it's really hard to avoid it. But here in shops like these, you can buy food plastic free. For example, you can go to shops like this to buy things um, in refillable bags. You can take your old single use shampoo bottle and you can go and refill it and use it again. So you're not generating more plastic waste. So I guess what I'm saying is that it's gonna take all of us working together to create healthy seas for everyone. And together we can definitely do something. And that's the help that we're asking from you as well. Starting from now, right now, why not? Let's do something together. So what I'm asking as a, as a first challenge is that you design a poster that says, we are sea champions. You get really creative and you decorate your poster with your favorite sea creatures. You can include some plastic items too, 
to show the problems that plastic are causing in our ocean. Then you need to ask your parent or guardian to help you to post the picture to Instagram, or you can email it to me with he at hello at common seas and feel free to ask any questions as well. It'd be great to hear from you. When you're posting your image, don't forget to tag at common seas and also use the hashtag sea champions because we're going to use that to find your image and so we can comment and we can share it more widely as well. And lastly, don't forget that we're really excited today to be launching these amazing 16 activities. And you can find the activities on the Common Seas website. And there's also a link connecting you to Common Seas on the World Ocean Day Festival website as well. So don't worry if you don't get a chance to scribble it down immediately. I think the only thing for me to say is to say that I've, I have been busy myself. And uh, so I'm going to say, a big thank you from me and I'm going to show you my little effort of doing the pledge. I'm not much of an artist but you can see that I have also I've had a go and I hope you'll have a go too I really can't wait to see your results. Thanks so much for listening and yeah hopefully see you online. Don't forget to include that at common seas and the hashtag sea champions. See you there thanks for listening. <laughs>